Hi, I'm Jim. We're here at Auto Dynamics today and we're going to be installing a set of Trick Flows Gen X 255 LS3 heads on this 2013 SS Camaro. Okay, to speed up the installation, I've already drained all the fluids from the vehicle, the coolants, and uh, disconnected the battery which is in the trunk. Um, TrickFlow recommends that you should have probably the shop manual for your vehicle for any torque specs and the disassembly that if you're not familiar with. Um, also, pretty much anything else is probably just regular tools you'll have. Uh, metric sockets, wrenches, air tools to speed things up on disassembly only. Um, when you reassemble it, you'll need a torque wrench and a torque angle gauge. And there's another, if you don't have the torque angle gauge, I have a uh, little trick that you can use to, uh, instead of using it. Okay, first we're going to start with removing the front exhaust from the uh, manifold uh, to the H-pipe. Uh, first we'll disassemble, we'll unhook the O2 sensors because they will come down with the pipes. Then we'll, the front half I've already loosened, so we just have to loosen the uh, clamp here, then we should be able to pull this whole pipe down. There. Then we can lower it car from here and we'll start on the top half. Okay, first we're going to start with removing the air cleaner assembly and the uh, part that goes to the throttle body just to get it out of the way and give us some extra room. And then we'll unhook the mass airflow sensor. And we'll pull it off the throttle body, making sure everything is disconnected. And we'll pull the whole assembly out. And that gives us a lot more room. Okay, next we're going to remove the coil assemblies and the spark plug wire so we can access the bolts going to the uh, exhaust manifold. Um, usually the easiest way I find that is to pull the plug wires off of the coils first and that will give you some extra leverage when you go to try to uh, get them off the spark plug. Um, they seem to stick harder to the spark plugs and this way you can wiggle them and you're less likely to damage a wire. Okay, and then uh, the fuel system also we're going to remove the feed line. This is a non-return system, so there's only one line. Um, you should make sure you always discharge the fuel pressure off uh, because these do run a, a high fuel pressure. You make sure you get the right size tool and you just stick it in and it'll spread the, the clip out and uh, it'll just pop right off. That way you can hold that up all the way. Then you want to pull the electrical connectors, the rest one off for the, uh, the coils themselves. And I should be able to just loosen the coil brackets and pull the whole coil assembly off. And that gets that out of the way. That gives us a lot more room to work on. Um, you want to unhook the coolant temp sensor, then you should be able to get into the uh, bolts that hold the exhaust manifold onto the head itself. Sometimes it's a lot easier too if you leave the one center bolt where it's stuck in a little bit. That way it kind of holds the manifold in place. And you can run the last one out. That way you can hold it with your one hand. And the nice thing with having stock exhaust manifolds is the manifold comes right out without having to uh, move anything. Okay, next we'll be taking the accessory belt off, then we'll have to take the accessory bracket off the left side head, then we'll take the intake off, and then we'll be able to get into the valve train.
lot of times it's nice to leave the bolts in. Um, sometimes they're a different length, so that helps you when you go to reassemble. You're not looking through, making sure that you have these, the right uh, bolt for the right hole. Okay, next we're going to remove the intake manifold. Um, need to go through and unplug all the injectors. They have a little safety device that keeps them from uh, popping off real easy, so you have to pry that up. Then you'll want to uh, pull the wiring harnesses loose. Do the same on this side. Make sure any sensor that is connected into this wiring harness is, is pulled loose so we can pull it out of the way so it won't be in the way when we try to get to the intake bolts. Okay, once you got everything out of the way and loose, we can go through and start taking the intake loose. One thing nice with the LS engines, is the intakes have no water going through them, so even though we drain the antifreeze out, if you wanted to change a intake, you could. And one thing nice with these intakes is they are plastic, so Usually you don't have to have help getting it off. And that exposes the valve train. Okay, to remove the valve train, go through and loosen all the rocks. It's always nice to do these a little bit at a time to take all the tension off because there is an aluminum bar underneath that usually a stock cam you don't have to worry about but a uh, something with a high lift you can it could uh, pry up on that far enough to uh, break it then being we are reusing these you should always keep everything in a in the same row that that it uh, comes off just so everything is is mating the same Okay, first we want to start by taking loose the 8 millimeter collar bolt. Then I find it's usually easier for the bigger bolts is to break them loose with a ratchet. Then once you get all the bolts loose. Usually you can finish taking them out with your air ratchet, which speeds things up a little bit. Usually I find it's a little nicer to pull the head bolts out when you before you pull the head off. Is it uh Usually makes it a little, a little easier. If you go to pull a head off, a lot of times they'll stick a uh, a ground on the back of them. That's the, you want to make sure you loosen that up before you take it off. Okay, after we've got the heads off, now uh, comes the fun part of it, of cleaning the block. Um, luckily, with the multi-layered shim gaskets, they don't leave a whole lot on. But uh, one thing I don't recommend is using any kind of abrasive type. Uh, scotch block or anything. I always use just uh, a razor blade. Um, that way you don't have to worry about getting any kind of particulates into the engine. Uh, we want to keep it as clean as possible. So we're going to go through and scrape everything off. Make sure you get everything nice and clean. Okay, next we'll be using a new head gasket. Um, the biggest thing you want to make sure is you get it on straight and, and actually they make it nice because um, it says front right on it, so as long as you line it up on the front, you got it on right. Then you just want to stick it on the two head dowels. Okay, on the uh, Gen X uh, trick flow heads, um, there's no right or left head. You can use one on either side. The only thing you have to do is make sure on um, the OE heads, they don't drill the back vent, but these are drilled at both ends, so you can use it on either side. So you have to make sure you get the plug that will fit into uh, the back vent. And also you'll notice on the intake ports, the 
um, rocker on bolts go through into it. So I'll show you later, but you want to make sure that you seal those up because if you don't, it will pull oil into the uh, intakes. You want to make sure you're careful when you set it down because you don't want to scratch the bottom surface, ceiling surface. Uh, next, we're using a new set of bolts. Um, these are torque to yield bolts, the OE style. Um, you always have to replace them because you're actually in the process, you're stretching the bolt so they cannot be reused. Um, they go in with no kind of, uh, they already have a sealant and stuff already on them. So all you have to do is install them and torque them to specs. Okay, after hand starting all the bolts to make sure that they're threaded in right, I'll take an impact so it speeds things up. Then I'll just run them down to where they're just a little snug, but that's, that's no way near torquing them. Just speeds the process up a little bit. Okay, in torquing the head bolts, we uh, do it in three different steps. First, you torque in a certain order um, to 22 foot-pounds. You torque all of them in, in order. Okay, now that we've got stage one done, we're torquing down at 22 foot-pounds. From here on down is you're stretching the bolt, so you're, you're turning it in a certain amount of degrees. Uh, the second pass is you go through all the big bolts and they are torqued at 90 degrees. Um, that's where this comes in handy, is a, a torque gauge or an angle gauge. Um, you can do that or being it's 90 degrees, it's easy to figure. You can take a mark, marker and make a straight line on the bolt because there's going to be some places you can't get this in. Um, then you just turn it, you know, then when the mark is at 90 degrees, you know you're there, or with the torque angle gauge. What you're going to do is probably with just, you'll want to use a long ratchet because it starts getting hard to do, and you don't want to do this with a torque wrench because it's awful hard on the torque wrench. That gets all of them down to 90. Now we have the third and final pass, which you do at 70 degrees. Okay, now that we've got the heads torqued down, we're ready to put the a valve train. Um, first, we're going to use the recommended push rod length of seven, seven inches uh, and seven hundred thousandths, and uh, we're going to put lube on the end, both tips of that. So, on the initial break in, when everything before oil gets everywhere, um, we'll be sure everything is well lubricated. Okay, after um, you've got the push rod in, you want to make sure that you use the uh, rocker arm rail that they include with the heads because it is different than what comes with the OE heads. Um, next, you want to go through, um, I pulled the rockers out of the oil so they're, uh, they've got plenty of lube in the bearings, and you'll notice that um, you've got an offset straight offset, so make sure when you're installing these that you have them in the proper order that they go. We'll go ahead and start off with putting the bolts into the exhaust rockers. The exhaust rockers are the straight ones, the offset one are the intakes. The intakes being the hole goes into the intake, we're going to put some Teflon tape on it to seal it because you'd be surprised because it works just like a vacuum with the vacuum going through the port that it will suck oil right through the threads. So you want to make sure you have plenty Uh, the Teflon tape, just make sure the threads are sealed. Okay, once I've got all the uh, rocker arms in place, I want to run them down by hand. Um, basically what I want to do here is run them down because I'm going to do two things. As long as the push rod is all the way down, I, I can check to see to make sure that my uh, valve adjustment is correct, but also um, with the, you don't want to tighten down a rock arm that's up on the top of the cam because you don't have enough thread engagement and you could pull the um, threads out of the head. Number one I know is up on top dead center so I know it's on the base of the cam. So what I'm doing is I'm tightening it down. I'm rotating the 
the push rod and once I get the where the push rod is tight it won't spin anymore you know all the plays out of it then you want to see how much valve lash you have and you should have anywhere from probably a half to a full turn then you know your valve lash is pretty close so it looks like we're doing pretty good so okay now that we've got them all snug down and uh, we know that our uh, preload's right. We're gonna go through and do a final uh, torque on them, which is uh, 22 foot-pounds. Okay, that pretty much wraps up the installation of the of uh, Trick Flow's uh, Gen X 255 heads. Uh, only thing we have left basically to do with the heads is uh, the back vents had to be plugged, so um, you have to make sure that you install those, uh, but other than that, it's just uh, putting it back together from the pieces you took off as far as the intake and the exhaust manifolds. Uh, so we're just about done. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, send it to the post below. Thank you. Bye.